So uh, I'm going to call my project my link list to separate it from the link list that's in the library. And uh, inside this my link list class, we're going to put another class, which is going to contain our node. And I think uh, we had talked about this last time we were together, where instead of using private access modifiers to protect all of our internal data, we can actually create the class itself inside another class so that other other outside classes don't accidentally come in and play with that. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say uh, class uh, node. And I don't remember if it matters if we put public or private here because it's going to be inside our class. Let me just try private and see if that works. And here uh, we would normally go private uh, integer data like this. But I mentioned to you because this class is contained in this other class, I don't think we need to do that here. So we'll just go integer data. And underneath here, we're going to have node next like that. All right. And I think the only other thing we might need here is a two string. So I think we'll just do that right now at override public string two string. All right. So when we want to print a node, all we want to print is the data portion of the node. Now, underneath here, what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to have a main method down here where I'm going to manually create one of these link list things. And what I want to do in this method is I want to create the following list. I want to create a list that has the number one, which points to the number two, which points to the number three. That's going to be my little list. So in order to do that, I have to create nodes, put these numbers inside the nodes, and then link up all the pointers so that they all point to the correct things. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to go node A equals new node, like that. And then I'm going to go, OK, I need to go. Okay, I need the word static here. I don't want to get um, off track as to why we need that here. We'll talk about that another day, but just put that in for now. Okay, so I, I got this new node A, and you know what? It would really be convenient if I could create these nodes and pass the data right then and there. So let's just throw a constructor in here as well. Uh, let's just go um, like that. Okay, so that's just my way of making it a little bit shorter. And then we're going to put a one in here to create this node right here. All right. And now what we'll do is we'll create two more of these. You do that now and put these numbers in. Please do that now. And as I had drawn on the board, we also want to have a front pointer that is going to point to the first node. And we also want this last node here to point to a null. And right now, in this node, when I create this node and data is set to this data, what is next set to by this constructor? What does it initialize it to, Ms. Mila? It sets it to null. But despite that, we're going to explicitly set it to null just so that it's easier for the reader, even though this is technically not really necessary because it already does this by default but we're not taking any chances, okay? So uh, we're just gonna leave it sort of like this. So now what I want to do is see if you can figure out how to set the pointers in these nodes so that we end up with a list like this. See if you can figure out what to write here to create this link list now. Look, we have the three individual nodes. I want you to see if you can work with your partner to figure out how to link them together. First of all, we don't even have anything called front yet. So let's do that. It's going to be node front equals something is going to go here. Then there's like a bunch of other code that goes here. And then we're all set. Down here, after we have constructed our little do it yourself link list, we would like to print the list. So we, the numbers should print one, then two, then three, maybe one on each line. So try to figure out 
how to write the code here to print the list. You're probably wondering if it's even possible, but it is because you've got these handles here. Look over here, Mr. Adil. So you've got these handles here. That's going to allow you to connect everything together. If you're very confused, I'm kind of expecting that at this point because your brain is like, what the heck is going on here? So this is just to show you how awkward it is to build link lists in this manner. We're going to build a general class of link lists soon. So then it won't be like this anymore. This is just to kind of show you the basics of a link list. So by creating these nodes, I have created these three boxes and I put one into the first box, two into the next box, three into the third box. These boxes are not linked with each other right now. They're just kind of floating in space. Luckily, we have pointers to them so we can access them. But I want to create this kind of structure here. OK, uh, let's look at this easier question here. What should I set the front to point to? If I have the front pointing to null, it will go like this. Look, it'll look like this. I'm glad you mentioned it. Look, it'll go like this. That's not what I want. I want this. No, we already have all the nodes we need. Okay, so front should point to the box that has the one in it. That box has another pointer called A. I just set one pointer equal to another. And now we have to have this A box, the next pointer in the A box point to, the B, point to this other box. So we need to write code to do that. And now we do the same thing over here with B. And then what should the C pointer next point to? Look up here. Sir, A is a pointer to a node. You've been thinking of it as a variable all your life. Now I change your life and tell you that it's really a pointer, an address that points to this node that has a one in it. And so front and front needs to be set to the same address that A has in it because it's going to point to this box. Yes, sir, it points to the front of the, of the link list. So c.next, who can tell me what's this going to be set to? Yes, Mila? That's set to null. Now, c.next is already equal to null when I did this, but you should still write this to make it clear to the reader what's going on here. Uh, I think we don't even need this last one. Between here and here, we now have constructed our link list. And last thing I'm going to ask you to do is write code to print the link list. Now. We happen to know that our link list has three elements in it, but you typically won't know. So what kind of loop should we use here? Should we use a for loop if we don't know how many? We'll use a while loop. We're going to need to create another pointer called temp, which is going to basically run through this list for us. And what should we set it to initially? What should it start off at, sir? What do I want to say here as the stopping condition when I say, okay, I've run out of elements. Yes, Miss Mila? I want to keep going until the temp variable is pointing to node C, and then I know after I printed node C that there's nothing left after it. So now I want to print the next element. So I want to print system out print ln. And what goes in here now? So temp.next would go and print uh the the next uh item on the list i want to put the current item on the list sir i could go like this or i could go like this this is probably better i'll use the two string okay but right now this will be easier for your brain to understand so i'll leave it like this for now and now i need to advance the pointer so that it doesn't point to the same node all the time like that Let's run this code now. It still works. And what's happening now is that I'm using the built-in to string of the node class to print the data items. If you want, for now, you can leave this as temp.data. Uh, so in Java, if you have an object and you lose a pointer to it and nothing is pointing it to it, to it in memory, that location is essentially lost. And what's going to happen is the garbage collector will come in eventually and reclaim that memory location. Java's runtime machine is smart enough to know which memory locations have pointers pointing to them and which ones are floating in space. 
Once you have an object floating in space, you can't access it anymore. Can you see how this whole thing is a really awkward way to create a list and print it? What we want to do instead is we want to create general methods in my my link list class. So for example, we want to create a method that would be allow us to insert a new item. What would the name of that method be called? What is it called in an array list? Add. Do you think we should call it the same thing? Yeah. So that would be the add method here. We want the names of these methods to be the exact same names we use when we access an array list because this is another list. Okay. So what we're going to do, and we're not going to do this now, we're not even going to do it next class, but I'm going to do some more work with you on this link list, and it's going to take your brain like a couple of weeks to settle down. But eventually, we will build an entire link list class from scratch. And here is the thing I need to explain to you about what's so difficult about this link list concept. You see these numbers? Do they occupy contiguous memory locations in Java? No, they're all over the place. Um, I'm not much for social media, but this little gem of a meme showed up on my Facebook feed one day because I'm in a bunch of computer science Facebook feeds. Here's what an array looks like. You allocate memory for 70 people on a bus. There's the bus. Here's another bus. See that? Here's what the equivalent looks like for an array list. It's just all over the place. It's an absolute mess if you look at the memory. Is that if you need to get to a location on the link list, does it have random access? It does not. If you need to get to this three, you have to start at the beginning of the list and circle, cycle all the way through till you get to the one you want. So you can see that access on this link list if you want to access the ith element on the linked list, what is the big O of that operation? It's going to be O of n, whereas with the array of the array list, it was O of k. So access is slow on the linked list. What do you think is going to be fast on the linked list? Why will they? Why will insertions and deletions be fast on a linked list, sir? They're not the same memory location, so you don't have to push anything over. What do you have to do when you delete an element in a link list? You just need to rearrange the pointers, and everything else is quiet. So that is the fundamental difference between the two.